Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 29 of the Everton Motor Racing podcast. Normally I'd say, oh, I hope you've had a nice weekend, but it's been like three days since we last on the podcast. So yeah, I hope you've had a nice three days and enjoyed the racing this weekend. We've had a triple header of BSB, World Superbikes and MotoGP. And J- Jacob's only watched MotoGP. But uh, yeah, you know, we've had a pretty sick weekend, to be fair, of racing, especially in World Superbikes, where everything's been kind of thrown up and down, left, right, centre. It's been pretty pretty mental, to be fair, with Top Rack and Rhea and Reading all grating on one another and causing a bit of... Uh, friction there it's going to be interesting to see how it goes on but um obviously you'll join your host declan again joined by jacob ward what's up guys and yeah we've had like i said some pretty good racing some pretty scary stuff that's happened as well when you talk about the moto 3 racing which we'll get into i haven't really got a topic for this podcast to be honest because the race has barely has recently finished i've just done a report 10 o'clock at night, and I'm pretty tired, to be fair. So, I don't yeah, really know. Just, yeah, there's not really... I haven't had time to process it yet. No, me neither. Normally, we, like, you know, it finishes about 1, 2 o'clock our time, and then we can, you know, process it, have a nap, you know, figure shit out. Hmm. But not today, you just straight into it. Chucked in at the deep end. But, yeah, it's um, been a pretty good recent uh, the racing weekend bar moto 3 which normally is quite good but threw up some nightmares but before we do yeah. that i just want to talk a bit about what's it bike jacob doesn't watch it but i want to talk about it because if you're not watching it you're bloody missing out I'm, I'm fine with watching it like it's just you know family comes first <laughs> and normally Barely. i am on a on a super bike weekend so unfortunately wsbk loses and like you're missing out on some mad racing because they're at Portimao this weekend. Mm. And Adrian Huertas was chair, crowned the um, Super Sport 300 champion. So, congratulations to Adrian. Yep, uh, good for him. But as I said last podcast, fuck the 300s. Yeah, because everyone's like, oh, we can't wait to see his career. But I'm like, <laughs> is, it, is, it, what, is he going to yeah, move? Good luck with that. He has to leave the class first before we see his career develop you know because that's the hardest part for these 300 riders is it actually getting out of the class yeah plus uh sprig ball in it mm. and if it, if he doesn't go to either motor three or stock six he's he's dead end well he's fucked. Al- he's already done red bull rookies and chev motor three so yeah that's it i i can't see a way back for him he's got to yeah. go i don't up. want to be defeatist but <laughs> he's got to go up now he's got to go to the super sport route there's um Tom B. Vamos is very much linked to the Oralak Kawasaki team for next year. So yeah, it's looking Kim like... And Buis are going up, apparently. Yeah, because told. Buis has stayed a year too long. He won the title and stayed back and has come third. Maybe he couldn't get another ride. Tom B. Vamos has proved his worth and should move up. I'm hoping that a seat will open for Huertas as well. But it, it's a strange situation in that championship, the World Superbike Championship, because it's like... It's a championship that you see a lot of, like, Moto 2X, like, rejects. I don't want to call them rejects, but, you know... Well, like, that is the only way to put it, isn't yeah. it? Because, like, you never see a Moto 2 um, front runner go to seat right there. No, it's... At the end of the day, you always see... The class is littered full of riders who didn't make it in the Grand Prix paddock. And it makes it very hard for talent to rise up through the ranks when you've got riders who deservedly should be in there I just want to preface this with like randy krumenacker for example who has taken a title there but came from the gv paddock various other riders i can't be bothered to list so it makes yeah, it hard when, destiny yeah so when like the seats aren't there to be taken you know because they're being taken by riders like balega by Murat manzi who probably will move over by now yari montea who'll probably stay in there next year it makes it really hard for the Super Sport 300 riders to step up, which is why we need like a stock six class, like we've alluded to last time. Yeah, hundred percent. Now the problem is, are any of those 300 riders better than the ones who are coming in from the GP paddock? And that's the problem. Mm. Yeah, got you it. higher talent. That's it. You know, these 300 riders will need a while to adapt. There are riders coming over from other championships, like Leonardo Tashini came over from the. Chev Motor 3 Championship into the Supersport Championship. He's done all right, not done amazingly, but he's doing like the Supersport Cup, 
It's like a different yeah. championship within the championship. Yeah, it's more stock, you know. Yeah, so I don't know. Hopefully these three can move up and not stay longer at the class because, you know, they would mention, oh, you know, there's far, four Spanish champions now in the class. You're in good company. And they're like, oh, you know, Mark Garcia. Um, what's the name? Anna Carrasco. And it's like, yeah, but they're still in the class. <laughs> yeah, and Andy the back. Gonzalez is the only one who's made anything of it, isn't he? Yeah, he's done really well. You know, and Maria Herrera, we can't dis- miss her out, who was also in the class for a little bit. But, mm. Mm, you know, maybe Motobi could be an idea for them, but oh, it's just tricky. But well done anyway for to Huertas. Yeah, he's still an FIM champion at the end of the day. Like, it's, it took nothing away from him, mm. but, but fuck 300s. But yeah, so obviously the World Superbike races, a bit of drama was unfolding in race one with Toprak took the win again with Reyes stacking it out of P1, which mm-hmm. is, is when you look back on the weekend and you look at what happened by the end of the weekend, Reyes will not be sleeping for a little while knowing that he could actually be leading the championship now if he hadn't have crashed out of Superbike and race one from P1. Yeah, where is it? 22 points now, isn't it? It's 24. And 24. if Ray hadn't have crashed out of out of race one and say mm. top back finished third and the points dropped back further and then top back really did screw himself over in the Super Bowl race. So he could, or maybe not lead in the championship, but he'd be very, very close. Yeah, 24 and, points is basically a race when you have to win if and hope top rack dnfs if it comes down to the final round at the end of the day though. yeah which we don't want of course um no no but like yeah no, you no. Know, if it's like 18 points you can risk top rack coming like you know mm. six seventh eighth wherever if you win yeah of course yeah but yeah and you know gives you no other option and you've got to push and that's the issue yeah and top rack basically was incredibly aggressive race one pretty much at one point riding into rayo with top with them literally colliding and both Raya and Reading, you can call them complainers and whatever after the but after the race, both of them said to the media, you know, Top Rack's very aggressive, so we're gonna be aggressive back. And you saw that in the race too when Redding and Rayo forcing moves past Top Rack and it you could see it actually screw Top Rack's head up a little bit. Top Rack suddenly mm-hmm. was making very rare mistakes. He never goes wide, he's always online. And suddenly he was being he was going wide into T one because he was expecting these basically the tables had turned and Raya and Redding, who haven't been able to ride their normal lines, were now doing the same mm. to Top Rack and Top Rack was running wide into T one because he couldn't ride his normal lines. Yep. Um but that's the thing. If you look if it was like when people do it to Mark, mm. it's so rare and he's so aggressive that he's normally the one dealing out that it kind of confuses him. Yeah. And it, it takes him like a, a corner or two to get back into the swing of things and yeah. Top Rack's exactly the same because he is he is like one of the most aggressive riders you see out there. Like well he's trained by Keenan, like, isn't he? So Yeah. Like if he, if there's a gap that's even slightly less the size of a Yamaha R one, he's going mm. into it, isn't he? Yeah, hundred percent. And just forcing these riders aside as we've seen and so Raya and Reading have stepped back and pushed aggressively and now Ray has kind of learned how to win in this new form because he won race two. Top back run race one with Loris Baz spectacularly getting on the podium. Yep, big up Loris. Yeah, Love that. fair play to you, mate. And Ray uh, crashed out of race one and the Super Pole race with Reading taking strong points every race. Like I, think, I think he got on the podium all three races. And which mm. is pretty impressive after his cycle from Jerez to Portimao this week. Yeah, James Tuzlan wasn't impressed. Here. Yeah, he said he wasn't. I think he said something along the lines of it not being the best way to prepare for a race weekend. And Scott Redding snapped back on the podium and was like, well, I'm on the podium. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the best answer, I think. You know? Yeah, fair play to him, you know. And But it's just interesting to see the championship the way it is because, again, it looks like, you know, it, Top Back has gained four points with only two rounds left to go with mm. six races left. You know, anything can happen. Top Rack has achieved a third DNF now this weekend. But again, what it's... What is it? 124 points still on our phone. Isn't it? Yeah, and the thing is, Top Rack's crash was weird because his front 
fender destroyed itself and went under his front wheel and crashed him out. Mm. The question is, though, all three of his crashes and DNS this year haven't been his fault. The first one was Gerloff knocking him off. Second one was his bike breaking down in Catalonia. His third was the fender breaking underneath him. So realistically, yeah. Top Break hasn't made a mistake. Which or is, if he has made a mistake, he's recovered from it. Yeah, which is rare. You rarely see a rider complete a full season, especially with that many races on the calendar, and not make mm. a single mistake and a single DNF through their own fault. Mm. Is could one be coming, or is Top Bag just that well rounded, or is is now the hyped up Red and Array are now going to force Top Bag into a mistake? You know, and if we get That's Alex Slows back. Yeah. It really could throw the cat amongst the pigeons because at the end of the day, Alex Lowe's now needs to step up and start taking points off top rack because he hasn't been doing all year long. He hasn't been doing. And so if we can get a situation where it's, you know, Redden, Raya and Alex Lowe's on the podium, that takes a full 12 points off of top rack if Redding's Raya is first. Mm. But the thing is, can you see realistically see Lowe's doing that when he was declared unfit this weekend? No. I mean, the new next race is in two weeks' time, so we'll have to see. But Yeah, like, realistically, I can't see it. He's he's not quite been there. He's not been there all year, unfit. unfortunately. So, yeah, it's a, it's a three-horse race at the end of the day with the odd occasion of Ronaldo coming in, I imagine. Mm, it's, but, it's a okay, weird like it's, it's All Top Rock has to do now is, is come home second or thirds, and he's got it. Well, because not, he, he, realistically, he's he's not going to not win the, not uh, necessarily. another race this year. Well, yeah, but the thing is, if Ray is winning, say, four of the last races, and mm. top back's third and second, Ray could probably claw back enough points to take the title still. But could you see top rack not winning another race all year? Mm. That's the thing. That is a good point. The question is, can we see top back not making a mistake for the year? Well, he's he's done it so far under mm. intense pressure, so why not? Yeah, it's it's like, very I, interesting. Like he's proven it at the minute that he hasn't made a, a critical error of his own accord. Mm. So if he's continually proven it, I've got no reason to doubt him. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's going to be interesting to see how it happens and what happens when it goes down to the wire in Indonesia. Because we've got Argentina, then we've got Indonesia. Who's to say he'll go to the wire? Mm, thing is, top right now actually genuinely can win the title next time out, provided yep. he wins all races in Ray DNF, which is very unlikely. Well, very unlikely Ray crashes out of a race, but mm. he's done it twice in front of top right this year. He's done it a lot this year, to be fair. Mm. He's done it, I think, Donington. three uh, Most as well, he did it. Yeah, Most, see? So, you know, he's thrown just... away some massive points this year that really have meant that well, mm. the Raya could have won the title if he hadn't. And so it'll be interesting to just to see how it goes down uh, in Indonesia. And, well, may the best man win. And who's to say Red in one, obviously? I can't see him. He's so far back now. Mm. But if, say, Top Rat and Ray stack it. Mm. Does it bring suddenly, him in then? You no, know, you know, anything could happen. That's the thing. That's, that's the beauty of bike racing is... So unpredictable. Well, yeah, like Casey O'Gorman today won the British Town Cup and he missed... 16 seconds. Well, the fact is, he won the title today and mm. missed, I think it was five rounds and clawed back over 91 points to take the title. Yeah. Which well, is he, mental. He's clearly a class of that field, isn't he? Mm, I've seen his uh, little social media posts this weekend. Well, his dad's social media posts this weekend, <laughs> which are um, quite hilarious, where his dad's saying that He's not going to get a junior world champion seat next year because Dorner have pulled it out when in reality Dorner have actually evaluated the class and the level of the nice. riders yep. and have opted to hand them an, a European Talent Cup seat and a Reb, and or a Red Bull rookie seat based on yep. their talent because junior world championship, they feel, is not the level there this year. And I, I'd back it. Um, mm. I had a message from another British Talent Cup rider on that post when I shared it. Mm. And um, he said, realistically, it's, nobody's fast enough. And I was like, fair enough, you know. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're like, they even said, like I spoke to one who said they, you know, they're two seconds off the pace. So yeah, and so his dad's trying to get him 150 grand to get a junior world championship seat. But at the end of the day, I'd follow Dorna's Dorna's <laughs> advice, you know. 
over. Yeah, look at look at Scott Ogden. Mm. It pays off. It does. I mean, like Eddie Shea did really well last mm. year when he's at the back in the Junior World Championship, and that's no disrespect to Eddie because it's a huge step. And Casey O'Gorman yeah. didn't exactly set the world alight when he did race in the European Talent Cup anyway, so... He was there about, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't at the level of 0 two zero. He wasn't at the front. He was, like, maybe getting around the point, you know, around PO15. Yeah, he was top 10s. He wasn't... No, nothing... But, again, the level's so high that I say nothing amazing, but the fact is that level's so high that it, you know, if you're slightly off the pace, you're going to be far back. Mm, exactly, and so... It'll be interesting to see where Casey Gorman does step up because he is he is rapid, like he is really impressive. I can't take anything European, away from him. Yeah, European Talent Cup is the way to go, I think. It is the point. best move. You know, he's fourteen, he's got years in him, you know, he's I don't mm. want to disrespect him or his dad, you know, but his dad needs to just just take a step back and just take what Dorner offer. You know, yeah, you yeah. might Don't get greedy. Yeah, you might be like, Oh no, my kid needs to be in junior world championship. But what happens if God forbid, Casey Gorman really struggles next year in the Junior World Championship and his last every race, so doesn't even qualify for races. And you just spent time getting 150k to chuck it down the road when there was a free European Talent Cup seat on the table. Mm. I, uh, like, Dorner have made some questionable decisions, but I think this one is prudent. Yeah, because the, their post was Dorner have taken away all all opportunities for us for next year. And it's like, no. Don't word it like that, mate, because then you're making it look like Dorna are the evil people when actually they've just changed it to a European Talent Cup seat and or a Rebel rookie seat. Yeah, I mean, Talent Cup is not exactly a, you know, a second class class, is it? Yeah, you know, It's very good class. Yeah, like it's been proven like Adrian Cruz says. Mm -hmm. He ran at the front of the European Talent Cup, stepped up to Moto3 and got a 10th. Yeah, well, the thing is, you just have to look at the talent in the recent years who have come from the class, who've gone on to impress, like Berman Aldegare, today's Merit Free winner, Eisen Guevara, for example, as well. David Alonso is yep. now one of the Rebel rookies this year. Yep, or Tolo is going to be stepping up to the Moto3. Yeah, you know, probably just... list so many names. Yeah, but a lot of them have come through the Talent Cup, so it's not a bad route. Yeah, so Artie think... Gas was in our champion there. Yep, it's just... Yeah, don't get greedy. Take, yeah. take what's in front of you because it's the development path. Don't know what you take yeah. for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Don't know what they're doing. Trust me. And that European Talent Cup, like you've just alluded to, can produce some fantastic riders. So, especially if you're getting a good team there. Like, if even if they put them in the British team, that's not a bad setup. Especially if then you progress into Junior World Championship the year later for free with the Junior yeah. Talent team, it's not a bad ride. Whereas you could pay 150k. And sit in a back market team who don't have the resources that, say, a junior world championship team that Dorna could offer do. So. Mm. That's it. Like he was part of the Kuna setup at the start of the year, wasn't he? Yeah, which are a very and good start. Hundred percent. But you got to wonder how much he paid for it. Mm. A lot of money. It's not coming free. So. But yeah, no, he won by sixteen seconds today. You know, he's clearly yeah. the class of our field. But there's yeah. there's there's a gap at the end of the day. Yeah, because he was like, I think he was. Like, FP1 is three seconds faster than anyone else, which, again, is really impressive, but... But he still... It doesn't that translate. Just means everybody else is six seconds off. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> translate. Off, you know? Like, you can be fast at Donington, a track that you know well, but as soon as you step in their territory, uh, you know, Aragon or Catalonia, a track they know well, they'll be three seconds mm. on you, <laughs> especially in the Junior World Championship. And that's it. But, yes. But, yeah, it's interesting, but regardless of that, well done, Corey. <laughs> Casey, sorry, mm. I don't know. I'm too tired, man. Well yeah, done. So you still, you know, again, it's a title. Well done, mate. Yeah, fair play. Fair and play. with the British Talent Cup can boost your career if you make the right decisions, well, like Scott. as I said, like Scott Ogden. And Josh Watley. You can't forget Josh Watley Josh did race Watley, there yeah. as well. Yep. So, you know, it's it, it's clearly designed to push you through. So mm. take where you go, you know? Yeah, even if it's like staying in Britain, like Storm Stacey was there and he's now a British superbike rider. Yeah, still paid to ride bikes at the end of the day. It's not a bad living. Yeah, could be worse. Could be worse. You could be uh, living a shit life like us. <laughs> yeah, you could be after you get up in the morning now and, and go to work. You know, I got a day off, so it's fine for me. But all right, all right, rub it in. <laughs> but yeah, so I want to move on to um, races you have watched in the Grand Prix World Championship. Cause yep. Okay. I haven't really watched BSB. I won't lie. I did follow it. Well done, Danny Buchan. 
for the uh, podium. Mm. Not in Dunny, yep. P2, good man. He, um, he had a mechanical and he had crash race one, P2, and then a DNF in race three due to a mechanical issue. Like, bloody hell, the highs are racing. Highs and lows are racing yeah. there. Um, 100%. This, uh, well, we saw it in book three, the highs and lows are racing in one go, didn't we? And yeah. Danny would have had the same today. So yeah. Literally, if you've been talking about Pedro Acosta, the eyes are racing. Yep. Fucking quite literally two and a half meters in the air. Yeah, mental. Like um he is he is incredibly lucky to be alive after he got flung at that ra- arm co- Aramco. Mm. Armco, yeah. That's Armco, right. that's it. Aramco is a sport. <laughs> yeah. Armco ex- got thrown into a Ramco and landed in a pit of money. <laughs> that's all right. A pit of oil. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the Meta Free race today, oh my god, like Salach is still in hospital. Mm-hmm. Like we should start by saying go well soon, Salach. Uh, yeah. Nasty crash. Horrendous. How his bloody glove came off. How the hell does that happen? I'm so I. It happened to Jack Miller as well this weekend. Really? Something to do with the bumps? I don't know, man. Like, but you think because the gloves are on pretty tight. Like, if you've ever put a mm. motorbike glove on, you know that they are. They are. They're not coming off very easily, especially with the yeah. two straps that they've got on them. They have to have like two straps. Yeah, it's violent, wasn't it? Um, mm. And that'd be made to measure, yeah. like... Yeah, oh, 100%. And, you know, especially as he's got custom gloves. Mm. You know, they'll be... Like, you know they are will be perfect, like, down to the fingernail length. Yeah, exactly. So for it to literally come off and, like, his knuckles are all grazed up, it's good luck, good thing he didn't land at his front, you know. Ugh. Yeah, well, he was sent... He, like, I when he landed, I thought, oh, that's a broken arm, mm. easily. But he was actually sent to hospital for thorax injuries. Yeah, to his abdomen neck. and thorax scans. Neck and his upper back, yeah. Yeah, so you know, he's still in hospital. He uh he beat himself up quite badly. It didn't look anything too serious, like the the incident until he landed. Yeah. And then it was like, like it was just ooh. a you know, a, a like we I say it so casually, but like a, a, it was a general high side, you know, it was nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. But the landing was ugly. Bent him right round. It was awful. Yeah. So of course that started the first red flag. Yeah. Which kicked all of this off. Yeah. Um, What's wrong? <laughs> I've been I've been trying. I I still don't know how I explain it without sounding like an idiot. Mm. But obviously, the results have been taken from the first of the two red flags. Mm. So it was as if the second one, which nearly killed three riders, didn't happen. Yeah. So it, it was. It turned out to be completely pointless having a really ugly incident where, you know, lots of riders were put at risk because mm-hmm. it didn't matter in the long run anyway. Because um, according to the sporting regulations, they didn't complete enough laps in the second restart, so they had to take the results from the first one. Yeah, so like three riders nearly died for pretty much nothing. Yeah, for fuck all. It's yeah. just, it's, it's like it. It's weird how it turned out that way, mm. but it's quite sickening to think that you know we could have had a real serious incident for fuck all it's mental to see a motor free race which are always chaotic in a five lap sprint a five lap dash on a track in this state oh yeah i mean it's, it, it's dangerous yeah it is i mean obviously guevara thankfully was handed the race win but the crash i want to ask you a question actually yeah was Onshu fully to blame I don't think Onchu was to blame at all, personally, really? because he took what is the 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 right line, the correct line. Because if you look at the white lines on the side of the track, mm. at the point where the impact was, they actually bend in. Mm. So if you go on that, you trigger the sensor, which gives you a track limits warning. So you stay out of it. Mm. Onchu didn't move, like he, he any, did. <laughs> yeah, like. Let, let me rephrase. He didn't make a sudden movement that was unexpected because it was his usual line. Well, yeah, because he was moving over, but it wasn't like it was snap. It was like... No, it was slowly. literally... The, it was the racing line. Mm. Like, I, honestly, I think if they punish him for this, like, it was a horrible incident, but if they punish Onchu for this, that would be unjustified. I think he was... I, was like, a... you know as you, like, you know as well as I do, like, on this pod, we, we champion safety as much as we possibly can. Mm. But on... But when no one's at fault it needs to be said well that's the thing like because obviously on she was moving over to get behind the slipstream of the rider ahead i think was toba 
and mm. Akos Al Alcoba was just yeah, behind, and obviously yeah. Alcoba's front wheel collided with. Uh, I can't get my words right. With Onsu's rear tire, and obviously flicked Alcoba over the handlebars and into the track. But yep. Alcoba could have moved over a bit, or he yeah, could have Al- rolled off a tiny bit. Yeah, like it, it. It wasn't enough of a move to be unexpected and like freak you out. You, you would have yeah. seen Onsu was drifting, moving over. Yeah, it wasn't like a slip. Like literally, no. bashed over. It, it was moving over at a slow. Like itch obviously, it's split second decisions and all that mm. at, at really high speeds. Well, they've got the reactions for it. That's literally what they're trained for. Mm. Yeah, like it's, it's normal speeds to them. Like, mm. well, we would be at thirty mile an hour, but. The fact of the matter is that it's so unpredictable in a slipstream mm. because you just can't legislate for a slipstream effect because you don't get to practice it the same every single lap. No. Yes. And I think that I think he was just sucked in by the fact that it was a two bike slipstream and he hit on Chu. Like it on Chu doesn't need punishing. I've like some people have said on Chu needs a ban. Yeah, people are saying jail and, time. Like, no way. Like he he did nothing wrong at the end of the day. He just took he was the rider in front, he took his normal line. Mm, if anything, there. I think Alcoba was more in the wrong. I'd say it was maybe fifty fifty. But Yeah, like if, if anybody's gonna be punished, it should be um Alcoba because he was he was more irresponsible mm. by not accounting for the fact that the normal line is to drift across the track. Yeah, he kind of Oh, I don't know. It's tricky when you're not there, like you're not a mm. rider. But you know, with our cover, the tracks it's half the tracks fault as well because it, you come out of that, you go, you you turn in right on the straight. It's not a straight; it's like a kink, isn't it? Mm. And the the normal line is to hug the side of the track and then drift across in the braking zone to get wide for the next left hand turn. Well, no, because they always obviously when they come out the corner, they always. If they come out of a right corner, they obviously always drift over to the left before coming over. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. But then, but then, like the kink is turning right into a left hand turn. Mm. So you're naturally going to go right on the track mm. anyway. Yeah. Like so, I I see no reason to punish anyone. It was absolutely scary, and I I do think that it sh- it was shouldn't have been restarted mm. because a five lap dash on a track in that state is just a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it's tricky because obviously they had seven laps and Salach went down. So you understand that, but a 10 lap race would have been better. A 10 lap race probably wouldn't have caused so many issues because riders weren't so desperate to make up positions as quickly as they could. But then yeah. you obviously saw Alcoba crash, miraculously be okay. Obviously, Minho's bike hit it and slung him up. And then Alco Costa came in and just went. Flying up in the air and thankfully somehow. Oh my god! Like, oh my god! Whoa! 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 What? Dennis Onchu has been suspended for the next two Grand Prix for causing the incident in Moto Three today. Oh my god! Jeez. What? Is that official? Official? Oh my god! Have a look. What? Oh, that's fucking laughable. Yeah, I've got it here. That is mental. That is laughable. That is... Wow. Sorry, I only just realised because my phone's been going insane. Yeah, they were, yeah, it was in 20 minutes ago. Bloody hell. Oh, that's a joke, man. That's mad. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, that, I, I'd suggest that's a wrong decision. That That is a knee-jerk reaction, that is, to a, a big incident. That uh, I would suggest that's through rider pressure. Could be, yeah. Well, Marcos Ramirez says that Said that um, a rider, he didn't name the rider, should be like banned for a long time. Like I just, he didn't, he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. That's the that's the thing. Is mm. I, I just don't understand that. Mm. But, but I'm not on the Grand Prix Commission, so what can I say? Uh, Dorna are very helpful as well. They've said that Sarch has been declared unfit following an examination in hospital. Well, that's helpful. He's in hospital. Of course, he's not fit. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Anyway. So that's yeah. That's two Grand Prix though. That's that's harsh. That's very harsh. Who's gonna get? Oh, obviously, Holgado will come in then. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Because obviously he's been confirmed for next year with the Tech 3 team. That's, yeah. So that at least that answers that question of what's going to happen. But yeah. as I was saying, like, fair play to the riders behind for their reactions when you had Mingo, Alcoba and Acosta all in the track. And somehow they managed to avoid them, get past them, and not hit them because it could have so easily been Al Coba flung to the right and a rider running him over. At those yeah. speeds as well, on the straight. Oh, he would have been mid speed, wouldn't he? Like, yeah. No other way to put it, we would have been having yet another minute silence. Mm, it's terrible. Like, he, I think Al Coba actually was very smart and hid behind his bike. Well, I don't think he did that on purpose. I'm not going to lie, but. <laughs> I, I think he... Uh, well, no, obviously, like... He did know, not he do it on purpose, me. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as he saw the bike was behind him, he sort of cocooned himself, and that, yeah. that's where he was smart. Yeah. Like, obviously, he didn't plan to go behind the bike, but once he knew what was happening, mm. you could see he sort of just went, oh, shit, and ducked behind it, which, good thinking. Mm. Yeah, Because if, if it had been the other way around, he would've, that would have been it. Like. Yeah, exactly, and... I mean, you saw the photos of the... If you haven't seen the photos, actually, go to the Sky Italia Instagram yeah, Sky page. Sported, Sky Sport Italy. The, they've got, like, loads of photos of Mino's suit, and, oh, my God, it's destroyed. But, like, fair play to... I did the race report, but I wasn't really in the mood to actually write anything about the race because I was that, like, annoyed. So I just basically shouted out all their um, protective equipment. But, yeah. you know, like, fair play to Day and Easy, mate, because that... His suit literally was worn all the way through, all the way over, and yet it was still, you couldn't see any skin still. And like the way Alpine Stars make their suits, I'm not disrespecting Alpine Stars because they did a splendid job as well today, but Alpine Stars, they print the design straight onto the leather, whereas they need yeah. to make the suit and then hand, like hand sew or sew in like the patches onto the suit. And you saw on like Minyu's suit when he went on his front, the the patch had kind of worn away, but the sliver underneath was fine. Yes. I, was just, I just thought that was a cool little... Uh... <laughs> yeah, um, you could see it was a... Every, I, like, we got to shout out every single one of their, like... Because what was it? Uh, Pedro's got MT helmets. And Alpine Star suit blocks. Alpine Star boots. suits, yep. Mino, AGV, and Danies. For, like, suit glove boots. And then uh, Alcoba is... Shark, shark helmet, lid, Rev lid. Shark. Still Revit. looking for that sponsorship. Yeah, he's got the Revit gloves, suit, and TCX boot. Yeah, so you know, shout out to every single one of those for keeping all those riders safe. Yeah, because they do. They all do an amazing job, but it just shows like wear some good kit. You know, you see like you see people around in crappy suits or dodgy suits just because they got the Repsol logos on them or whatever, and it's like. Yeah. Is it really worth it, mate? <laughs> yeah, it's probably made of, like, dog or something. Yeah, because the thing is, like, Mino's arm had, like, a hole in it on a suit. Like, if I was bare skin, mate, it it lost his arm. I'm not even joking. No, 100%. Like, and, um, like, it's just safety equipment has come so far that for incidents like that, this... Like, the airbags like, played a safer. pivotal role, the airbags today. 100%. Like, what an amazing piece of technology. Yeah, it's it's actually just when you sit back and think about it, it's like, oh god, like mm. well done. Yeah, like fair play. You know, like yes. these carbon helmets, like carbon's four times stronger than steel, so yeah. their heads are very well protected as well. <laughs> yeah, the only thing you can't protect is the squishy bit in the middle from hitting the skull, isn't it? But yeah. no helmet's going to be able to do that. Mm, it's, Short it's... of drilling in and securing your brain from where it is. Yeah, because like you had could happen, like you had the crash, and then they were instantly up on their feet, and you just. It, it was nice to just have that and, you know, completely instantly erode any, like, worry mm. of the riders and if they were all right, especially after the recent events, you know. Yeah, that's it. But, yeah, it was um, nice. On a lighter note, yeah. one thing I did love was, um, you know, when they found out that uh, Guevara had been given the win? Mm. Did you see Gino Borsai running down pit lane with the rule the book? The rule book. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was amazing, to yeah. be honest. Like the, the way his face, he, he just knew he'd had, he'd had everybody's pants down with it. I He's love like, it. Yes. <laughs> it's shows. brilliant. Like, it took me a while to figure out what it was, and then and then someone said, "Oh, it's the rule book." And I was like, "Oh shit, of course it is." Yeah, it was um interesting one for Guevara. Obviously, 
funny actually we haven't actually said the predictions funny enough i'll say those now very quickly yeah well i i've, I've taken an oath now not to predict these on anymore because every time i did he did shit yeah and then so you went foggia minio antonelli which you got one of yeah. and i got foggia garcia who didn't race and antonelli so foggia again who continued his 100% record of the podium yeah, until zero. He, he's <laughs> going to end up a pub quiz cryptic question, 100%. Like, the fact that the, we had all this shit going on, and yet he still got a bloody podium. <laughs> yeah. He's, um, it's a... Uh, is the title swinging? Well, I think it, the balance is tipping. 30 points now. I said this about three races ago, and you're like, oh, I think it's too far. Hmm. 75 to grab, 75 points up for grabs. But, um, yes. you know, you've been banging on about Eisen all this year, and I know I have a little bit as well, but you're, you've are you been his, like, number one fan for a while. Um, And, yep. you know, <laughs> the one time you don't... I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say it, but... I yeah, told just, you. <laughs> but, um, honestly, like, it, it wasn't a difficult prediction to say that he was going to win this year. Hmm. That's the thing. It wasn't out there. It wasn't outrageous. Like it was. It's not like saying Petrucci's going to win this year, you know. Yeah. Like no offense to Petrux, but he's just. They, they, there's no chance, is there? No. Uh, but like, Izan's just, you know, much like Fermin and and a couple of other riders coming through. He's a once in a generation talent. Yeah, he's definitely so he like was a... always going to win. Yeah, he was superb today. To be fair, and your mate John McPhee got on the box as well. Yeah, um, you know, fully deserved. Mm. He uh, he was there for both restarts at the end of the day. Yeah, he did well. I was so, gutted you know, for um, Artigan. Fully deserved. Yeah. Um, it's fair, mm. <laughs> but it was so close. Okay, if he'd been milliseconds later, we would be raving about the start of the year from Artigas. Yeah, because he... It's yeah, literally that close. He could have won again if it wasn't for that, which is a big shame for him, but if you don't... yeah. He made the jump start, so he has to deal with that. Yeah, at the end of the day, he broke the rules and paid the price of a double long lap. Yeah. But it um, was... I was quite surprised as well, because um, I was under the impression that double long laps had to be taken one after the other. No, you can just do it. Do one and then just do another whenever you feel like it, as long as it's within like the specified time zone. Yeah, you've got five laps in it. Yeah. <sighs> Think so. something like that, but I, I, I was always under the impression that they had to be consecutive. So hmm. I was very surprised at that. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really fully know how it works. So sorry about that. We yeah, end Messia in fourth as well, with Onsu in fifth as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, fair. Hmm. But because obviously the results were taken from the first red flag. Yeah. So you know, like the fact that the incident happened, it uh, it doesn't matter. It, me- it means nothing. It's it's stricken off the record as far as everybody's concerned. Like we, we'll look back if like someone in twenty sixty three now wants to look back and at this race, yeah, they'll just see the first race and it was red flagged and that's it mm. in the record books. You know, they want another full story. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But um, I want to move on to Moto two now. Yeah, um, quite enjoyed about it too. Yeah, I didn't really watch it to be honest. Can't lie, I, but well, we all me. know I'm, I'm like, I think I'm the only guy who likes about two in the world. <laughs> so you know, yeah, but um, yeah, chaos, drama, Remy Gardner. Yeah, Rem Dog's feeling the pressure. I think. Yeah, he's um dropping points, man. Twenty five points he's dropped now to his um, obscenely impressive Ralph Fernandez, who yeah. only has. Didn't come here last year, and only yes. was here as a rookie in his third of a race in Moto Three, and has come here. Obviously, is now a Moto Two rookie. Led FP One, FP Two, FP Three, qualified on pole, led the warm up, and led every single lap in the race. Talk about domination! It's like there's no other way to put it. it it's just an absolute slapping of the field, isn't it? Decimation, you know. Yeah. I like, guess it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Fair play to him. <laughs> like, well, you know, the company he's keeping is now officially Mark Marquez. Mm, which is That's mental. the level. <laughs> yeah, he's just a, pff, something else, man. And it sucks to see Remy struggling, but at the end of the day, when you've got a teammate as good as that, who really is a rookie, he doesn't really have anything to lose. He's still a rookie. You know, he's not there to fight mm. for the title. So 
as far as Raul's concerned, he's just there to race. Yeah, that's it. He's just there to basically have a jolly until he's on the motor GP bike, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the thing. As, is... I, as I said to you um, off here, uh, obviously, since the KTM RC16 tests at Mizano, the motor GP tests, mm. where Raul actually beat Remy, suddenly the balance of power has swung, hasn't it? Mm, it's, it's weird with the RC16 tests. I think it's proven that, no disrespect to Remy, but Raul will probably next year adapt very quickly. And be at the if level he hasn't already. very quickly. Yeah, like he probably already is at the level because Remy might be like a Luca Marini and just take a few more rounds, a bit longer to adapt. But he will get there hundred percent. But I think Raul will literally hop on it, swing his leg over it, and a Qatar be like top ten. Yeah, that's it. And it's quite like Remy's confidence has took a hit from that. It's visible. Mm. You, you, literally, he, you can like, literally see it on his face. Yeah, he would deny it like till the cows come on. But the fact is, you can see it. Yeah, you can literally look at his face and you can see that it's getting to him a little bit. Yeah, suddenly he was the one everybody was raving about. He was the KTM golden boy, you know, first one announced to go up to boot GP. Mm. And now suddenly Raul's coming. He's gone quicker at the at the test, and Seven all of a sudden wins. you're thinking, yep, like your know, match Mark Marquez for rookie wins in a single season, and suddenly you're thinking. Oh shit! <laughs> mm, that's the thing. <laughs> Fucking hell, this guy's coming. Yeah, it's mad, really, because like I don't know, we just never expected it to be honest. But the thing is, as well, we knew he'd do well, but yeah. this well, yeah. I like if we're being completely honest, I don't think even Real Fernandez thought he'd do this well. No way, no way, no way that like, he thought he'd you've got to pick yourself well. up in that. But yeah. And I, I don't think in his wildest dreams he thought he would get anything other than maybe one win. Yeah, exactly. And that's what you expect from a rookie at the end of the day. He probably excited to do two years again in the class and then maybe progress with KTM as or even on the Yamaha. Yeah. As we've said many, many times, take Raul Fernandez out of the equation and the rookies this season are actually probably a bit higher than what we'd expect. The rookies this season have been absolutely outstanding from like Tony yeah. Abelino, Igor, uh, yeah. Cameron I'd Bobier. Like the- Podiums. The only other rookie podium has been Ayagura. Yeah, you know, like that's the level. Like they've done really well, but to take three consecutive race wins as a rookie, <laughs> piss take. Absolute piss take. You know, and he's yeah. he's literally just taking the mick. And the fact yeah. of the matter is, he has only had two DNFs all year long, and he's only nine points off his teammate. Mm-hmm. Whereas his teammates now taking one and dropped a significant amount of points to the point where he may lose a title over it. You know, like, yeah, Remy it's... was happy a few rounds ago to just, oh, I'll finish second, I'll finish second, I'll finish second. And then suddenly, oh, shit. Just gonna... Now he's like, shit, now I have to finish first now. But can can he be beaten? You know, we're going back to a track <laughs> in a few weeks' time that Raul has already won at. The next two he's already won at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally, he's already won at the next two rounds. Like, he is year. untouchable at Portimo. Yeah. Like, that was his first win. I, I called it. If yeah. you remember, I actually called him to win, and, mm. I was, and it was like risky at the time. Mm. Looking back, it wasn't. I, I I genuinely think this title is as good as Raul's, barring a mistake, which is possible because you know rookie. Well, but all he needs to, now with two attracts that he's been on. Well, he if goes. He, yeah, if he repeats what he's already done this year and wins the next two races, even if Remy's second, the title will then swing to Raul with one point going into Valencia. <laughs> see now that would be fireworks that would be because so Raul is excellent around Valencia yeah he is yeah and like Remy's good first, as well if I'm not mistaken he took his first TV win at Valencia I think so and then he did his wild card replacing Maria Herrera at Valencia finished 11th place which is better than Maria Herrera's results all yeah. year long that's it yeah. yeah he knows his way around <laughs> Valencia as well like this could I think <laughs> it's Raul's. Interesting. I think it's Raul's. If we did, you know, I mean, yeah, Remy Garner did win at Portimao last year. So, and who's to say Bez won a feature at Mizano and split them, yeah. for example? And as um, or DG Fabio DG as well, who's announced today that he is back and that we all know yep. it. <laughs> yep. In Spanish, for, even though it's Italian. <laughs> I think he needs to shave his beard though. He looks like he's just stuck his pubes to his face. <laughs> he looks a bit. He looks Italian. <laughs> Yeah, like genuinely, it's like someone shaved a dog and stuck it on him. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, give me uh, some of the facial hair, you know? 
That was the worst Italian accent I've ever used. I was trying to do fucking this. French or whatever because he's speaking Italian, fr- Italian, Spanish earlier. So I was like, yeah, I'll just add another uh, nationality to the roster. Fucking hell. Yeah, that that uh, <laughs> that was that was not anything. That's the problem. That was mm. just that was just like a mix of crap Rick accents. Can I use the excuse that I'm tired, or is that is that played out now? Yeah, use the excuse that you're stupid. No, that's fair. Oh yeah, big bloody shout out to Cameron Bobier in fifth place. I was just going to Cam, yeah. Big man Cam. Petition for America Racing to keep that livery and keep it wow. next year as well. That was fire, mate. Fucking yeah, fire. Yeah, I, uh, I was nursing a chubby when I looked at it. I was like, <laughs> it, that thing was fucking gorgeous. It was nice. And what uh, the fuck was that? Oh, it was gorgeous. Oh, shut up, mate. It was fucking lovely, though. Let's be honest. Yeah, it was. Like, it was really it, nice. It makes you realise just how boring their standard livery is. Yeah, their livery is pretty shit. I can't lie. I, I love the number on the tail unit of their livery, but other than that, it's, it's, it's just a fucking Ital Trans ripoff. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly more purple Ital Trans is like, all it is. Oh, yeah. let's get this Ital Trans livery and make it a bit American. Put a red stripe yeah. on it. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Purplify it a little bit. Yeah. Jumps a good in. Sick. But yeah, I did like but... the... Uh, what's his name? Raul... No, not fucking Raul. Marcos, Marcos Ramirez. Ramirez. Yeah, yeah the, the American... They had the American um, elbow sliders. Mac and sort yeah. of some elbow sliders. Oh, that yeah, is yeah, sick. And, um, and he obviously he ran the livery as well because American race and yeah. his fluorescent yellow numbers, it looked fire. It popped. But yeah, Cam looked really good. Um, he can now say, no matter what happens, he can tell his grandkids later down the line, I led a Moto 2 race. I beat... What's... Let's have a look. I beat Joe Roberts. I beat the old great half-ish Tyron. <laughs> Everybody who finished in front of him will probably be a MotoGP in the next two years. 100%. Well, like Augusta, three of them already what? are. Yeah, that's it. Like that's why I said next two years. Obviously, Adesto isn't going up. Yeah, I know. But you know, when he wins the title for IO next year, mm. but that's the thing. Man. Like Cameron has proven today that it, it's just the fact that track knowledge is hindering him, not his ability. Yeah, so like he's proven he belongs. Yeah, but we knew anyway. But mm. like, where my prediction? I went the wrong American. You did. Fucking Joe Roberts, mate, has had a bloody nightmare again. Yeah, like I said last last predictions if he can't do well you he can't do well anyway i think him in Italian trans are fucked yeah because he said like that he had options for elsewhere but chose not to because he wanted to finish what, what he'd done and my like, bro fucking finish your career before it ends you yeah that's right exactly right i was just about to say is the, the think of your finish career. where you started the only thing that's going to finish is the relationship with him out in his year and not on a bike yeah exactly it, it can't continue the way it is like what's happened hmm. you know yeah. it's 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 sad to see like f- going from uh, being offered a MotoGP ride with Aprilia yeah to finishing 20 what was it 25th yeah. in his home race so, no he's um what was he 18 18th at his home race outside of the points at his home race in which his rookie fellow American came 5th hmm yeah it's exactly. not good enough Sorry. Yeah, exactly. It's not It's not what you expect from a rider of his level, you know? Yeah, a rider of his calibre should be challenging at least in the top eight every single time. Yeah. On what, let's not forget, because nobody's won the title right now, it's still the reigning champion's bike mm. team. Yeah. Like, it's not good enough. It's just not good enough. And he, he needs to go. Like, yeah. I hate to see teams and riders split. Mm. But... I, I see no reason to stay at Ital Trans at this point. No, I don't either. It's, it's doing it's more just harm flogging than a good. dead horse, isn't it? Yeah, it's doing more harm than good now. So. Yeah, it literally is is beating a dead horse because mm. you're not going to get fuck all out of it. Yeah, exactly. But um, I just want to add something random as well. Um, I got a message mm. from a motor free rider. I won't name a name just in case, but they sent me actually a load of photos of their suit from today. Right. And they were hit by a rider. I'm not going to name the same of the name of the rider just in case. But their right. suit is fucked, mate. But like in a good way, in the fact that it could have been much worse. Like there is where the shoulder. Send it to me. 
Just you are. Send it me. Yeah, well, actually, um, but like where the suit could have been like really damaged, where like literally he could have had some serious like damage. His suit has mm. protected him, you know, and the riders come out and said that he said basically that my suit company, I won't name him just in case, uh, is one of the best. Nothing happened with said rider rolling, running over me at turn 18. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, that is some damage, isn't it? Bloody hell. And yet, somehow, he was fine because the suit protected him. Like, look at all the holes in the suit. Sorry for the people who are listening to this podcast. Yeah, obviously we don't like to see, but look at the hump. Fuck it out. Yeah, there's literally like a hole in the hump and like tire damage everywhere. But the rider was completely fine. So that's good. Like I'd and like to see that. Yeah, like the holes all over the suit. But again, the rider's completely fine. Obviously, we didn't we didn't see what happened. So no, for some like reason. That's, yeah, that's that's pretty wild. Fuck that me. Yeah. So fair play to all these guys who are to, you know helping to protect these riders because it, it's, it's proof that it worked. A few years ago the suit probably would have ripped open and the rider would have been exposed to all sorts <laughs> of gravel damage. You know, like, we never ever, ever hear of skin grafts anymore. No, nah, that's it. Like it. It takes a the it takes a rare occurrence. Like, yeah. the last thing you can think of is a PG. Mm. Mm. And th- that was an that was a fire. problem. That was a fire. That's what <laughs> it takes now. Yeah, like, I remember like, when I started listening Watching YouTube, bloody watching about GP and like what's his name, Randy Depuni had to have skin grafts and James Toseland was having skin grafts and now it's very rare. Like they get road rash, of course, because the friction inside the suit when you are sliding down the road will cause issues. And Rossi himself has had has got road rash right now from an issue at the um, the ranch, but he's wearing motocross gear, so you can kind of expect it, but... Yeah, that ain't going to protect you, is it? No, exactly, but, you know, so these suits, yeah, just fair play. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I'm, uh, I'm impressed with that. Yeah, mad, but, like, you know, that's one of the top brands as well, that's, like, one of the... Yeah, it, it had a, a guy messaging you on Instagram saying, hey, we manufacture high-quality suits. No, it's not one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, you know, so it just shows the level. So, yeah, big, big um, shout-out yeah. to all those guys who are working to... I think it's worth mentioning ride. as well. Um, good Big shout-out to the homologation tests because mm. they clearly prove, like... They are the best. Yeah. Like, you don't pass it unless you go the best. Schubert, you know, they make F1 helmets. They had the they rookie pass... contract. Yeah, and they did not pass the homologation test a while back. So yeah. if, if your product is inferior, which mm. we can say it is because it didn't pass the test. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to put like they, it out it there. It has now. I don't want to put it out there because I don't want to get a bloody um, a lawsuit on us. They Their helmet is safe, but they didn't yes. pass because they were causing issues with like manufacturing and actually supplying the helmets. <laughs> yes. But for whatever reason, they didn't get the homologation. And all loads of did. riders had to like what's his name? Yeah. Channel Jessica Onsu Raffin. Was the biggest, wasn't he? Yeah, the Onsu's had to drop it. Um what's his face? Uh Jessica Raffin had to drop it as well. Joe Roberts had to drop it for H J C. Yeah, they they are at the end of the day, they are F one manufacturer helmets. There's no doubt that they are safe. Michael Schumacher wore them. Yeah. But they didn't pass the homologation, therefore, sorry, I'm allowed to say it, it was an inferior product because of whatever reason. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah, and so, and you know, they, it works at the end of the day. Yeah, so, you know, big ups to the FIM for these tests. Yeah, fair play to them. Um, yeah, back on to Meta 2. <laughs> we had, like... I think on I the think quali- people don't give a shit about the tangents at this point. They sort of expect them. Yeah, they're like, we just chat like, like shit. Yeah, we, like I had a nice message, didn't I? You talk about cocaine all the time. Oh yeah, I just oh, want to put it out there. I'm trying to get sponsored by the country of Peru. So. Yeah, I was gonna say I was meant to do a bloody intro. I was like, oh, weird. This podcast is now now sponsored no, by sp- Paolo Escobar. But I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking for some of the finest Bolivian to sponsor me. I'm sorry, I don't have to work, but yeah, well, yeah, um, it's not happening so far. We haven't managed to wedge cocaine into this episode, so we're doing all right. Well, I just did, but yeah, true, true, true. But like. So with today's Moto Two race, if I go through the thing, there's one, two, three, four rookies in the top ten, and in qualifying, 
five of the mm. ten top ten were rookies. Yep. Which is so, mad. Yeah, it just goes to show, doesn't it, that perhaps having a bit more power mm. and a bit more line choice yep. with a different type of engine compared to that Honda has made all the difference. Yeah. Because they still don't have traction control. Mm. You know, they, they it's still all in their wrist. Like, yeah. obviously, they've got certain amounts of electronic stability programs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But they don't have outright traction control. Like, no, nothing's changed in that regard. No, it's still pretty much just... Well, the traction they control still have is, steel their, discs. is their wrist. <laughs> yeah. But... So, you know, it, it just goes to show that a different type of engine with more line choice gives you more freedom to learn. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, big ups to Triumph and Extern Pro for actually making the engines like near bulletproof like yeah, i say that with two misfires today <laughs> yeah but how rare is that very very rare. the only rider i've seen blow up an engine on in the triumph era this year has been jorge navarro mm, and yeah. that's because he keeps getting fined by extern pro because he's over having it anyway <laughs> so, that case. yeah so you know like they, they are bulletproof so something when tits up, I I reckon I I put it in the thing. I reckon um the bumps knock some an electronic loose. I do. Yeah, hundred percent. Because it was only a misfire. I reckon it was something electronic as opposed to engine. Hmm. But it was Mar- uh, Marshall Schroeder and Sam Lowe's. They both had to pull out for the same issue. Yeah, it's it's scary to be honest. That mm. you know these riders. You know if they, you're like battling for a championship and then suddenly bang. Yeah. Like it, imagine it happened to Raul. Oh, mate. <laughs> but no. he is a fucking scary man. Imagine his anger after that. Yeah. Like, he's, if he fucked thought... the cocaine, yeah. he's a car... he looks like a cartel <laughs> member, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. But like, like if... If, he, if he come up to you, right, with a 10 bag, you think, oh, that's good shit. Mm. There we go, the drug talk. But, like, you know, <laughs> like, you saw Isaac Guevara's little kickoff today. Like, if that was <laughs> Raul Fernandez, holy shit, the. The whole pit walls would be yeah. coming down. <laughs> the bloody yeah. um, KTM motorhome would be nothing left yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah, he would trash the place. Wouldn't he? Like, <laughs> he's our nil chair one. Yeah, fucking hell. He, he really did. He How fell over, didn't lose he? lose to a fucking chair? He kicked the chair and fucking stacked it. <laughs> How'd you lose to a chair? <laughs> did you like the meme I made? <laughs> it wasn't bad. I'll be honest. It wasn't. I did chuckle. I t- I I just, did I'm more concerned before. about how he lost the chair. I know. Like... A chair doesn't move, you know. You know what to expect, <laughs> and he's still fucking lost. <laughs> fucking hell! At least he won the race. That's the same. Yeah, game. he'll definitely yeah, get telling off for that, though. Fucking hell! Yeah, someone's. There's a lot of people saying, "Oh, I didn't like that because yeah, he's he, a spoiled he brat." Like, imagine you just come that close after shed loads of fourth places, and you're rear shock at lay down of all things. Yeah, like when was the last time we seen a rear shock explode? Very rare, unless it like, probably has happened a few times this year. We've just not known about. Well, it's near impossible to ride with a collapse shock. To Is be it? Fair. Yeah, like it, it. You know, they one can go a bit funny, and you mm. can maybe get away with it. But a collapse shock, like you could see, is he barely put any pressure on the back, and he just went yeah, straight just down, drop him on it. Yeah, so you know, like it, that's near impossible to ride with. It will affect you, and I can't think of the last time I saw a, a shock collapse. Poor guy. So you, he must have been thinking, oh my god, what have I got to do? Like, yeah, exactly, because he's been so close. But you know, he did win the race. But back to Ralph Fernandez, yeah, that man is fucking scary. Like in, like even his oh, interviews and stuff, like him. he's got a dark, deep voice as well. And you're like, yeah. oh my god, like he is scary. Like I know some stories about him already, and yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah, yeah I, no, I wouldn't fuck with him. No way, man. <laughs> you could see him like doing like. You know the Scarface end scene where he's like, say hello to my little friend. No, I've never seen Scarface. Oh, sort your life out. Good <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't watch movies, man. I don't watch movies, but Scarface? Mate, I could give you a list of he... like really good movies I've never watched, and you'd be stunned. Like Pulp Fiction, I've never seen. The same. I, I don't oh, watch okay. films, but Scarface, I did. And trust me, do it. What about like, like The Godfather? Have you seen all those? Nope. Oh, that's fine then. Okay, we're in the similar... Similar yeah, page then. Trust me, Scarface, <laughs> amazing. But it's a bit at the end where he's like, sell out of my little friend. They shoot through the door. Mm. And I could see Ralph Fernandez doing that. He's just scary. Just blasting a fucking rocket launcher out, didn't he? Like, <laughs> like if he's pissed off, bloody hell, you want to stay right away because 
Yeah, like, like that's why I thought Panati was a brave man fighting his brother because <laughs> imagine you know you just there you're, you're scrapping with his brother and then all of a sudden you turn around Raul's just coming at you and Drummond Yeah, you're shit a brick like. Apparently, um, Adrian's been a little shit when that happened. Yeah. Which I'm yeah. not surprised about, to be honest. But actually, speaking of Fanati, obviously he has signed to go back to Moto Two. Yes, um, yeah, well, that's what I was coming bringing up for you yeah. with the <laughs> yeah. um, speed up speed up squad, which is great for him. Um, facing Yari at this point, clearly. Yeah, I've got to say I'm kind of slowly but surely warming to him a little bit. I won't lie. He, he does seem to have sorted his shit out, doesn't he? Like. How do you put it in a way that doesn't seem horrible to him? Like, I think he's still a dick, and that'll never go away. But he's not as much of a dick as he was. So yeah, I get you. I get you. I mean, he's he's definitely kind of turned it around, if that makes sense. You know, his um, his anger's not as bad. You don't really see it, it as bad on track anymore. And I think he has kind of come to terms of how lucky he is yeah and realize that no actually he has been gifted he's just matured yeah i think so he's quite old now anyways now yeah that's it like well he's like he's ancient at this point 26 i think something like that yeah like he's ancient in motor two to motor three terms yeah he is he's a veteran of the class now yeah um he and the best thing is, speed up have saved money because they don't have to change the number vinyls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just continue with number 55. Yeah. That's it, because there's no number 5 in Motor 2, is there? No. Oh, I don't think so. Locatelli used it, but obviously not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it's number 5, so... Mm. Yeah, he might go back to 5, but all they got to do is cut one of the 5s off. It's not hard. <laughs> Too much. But yeah, people are still bad. Like, obviously, the, the main theme on the post is oh watch out everybody else for your break leavers <laughs> yeah. original that's the thing now but um yeah I'm, I'm happy for him so yeah i want to move to motor gp now yeah um mark mercies mark mercies can i just put it out there yeah everybody's saying oh it's a one-off he's won two races now <laughs> and he's got a podium at <laughs> Aragon as yeah. well. It's not a, is, is that a two off or a one off? I don't know, mate. We just, what these like people do, right, is they move the goalpost. So every time Marquez achieves something more, they'll move the goalpost to downplay his mm. achievements. Marquez, yeah. oh, he's won nine titles. Oh, yeah, but he hasn't won 10. He wins 10 titles. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but Agostini's got 15. <laughs> yeah, he went, Marquez went to Tenerife. Well, why didn't he go to 11 a reef? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the goalposts no, so, just move, like you know, Marquez has had two stunning victories this year. Because and the podium. One thing, the one thing I have seen that, you know, is sort of fair for once. Mm. He still needs to do it on right hand turn, right hand tracks. Mizano, me, trust me, yeah. right? Yes, Mizano, he's gonna do it. It's coming. Yeah, like, it's coming. Hundred percent coming. But that is a fair point, right now, because you still can't truly say his shoulders get it back to where it is because he hasn't done he hasn't won at the right hand track of course yet. yeah is is one lap the fact that he's now got a front row as well will be confidence inspiring yes. he's, yeah, he is, I, he's i would be alarmed if i was the far field like you you know he's coming back because people are getting salty yes people are <laughs> starting to hate again yeah and nobody likes success no yeah, people shit on you if you're successful you could cure, create the cure for cancer and someone will have an issue with it yeah, that's it. They'd be oh, why is it in fucking vaccine form? I'm scared of needles. Yeah. So yeah, so Marquez is um, he's definitely coming back though. Twenty twenty two, Fabio needs yeah. to watch out. He's got he's got some uh, some trouble. Troubles coming. Hundred yeah. percent. And it'll be it's it's funny actually. You um, Fabio is yet to beat Marquez in a one on one because he had the chance today but couldn't match his consistency. Yep, and that's it. Uh, Mark was the only rider consistently in the 204s. Yeah, he was very consistent. Like, fair play to Fabio. He probably was just thinking about the title. Like, to be to be real, like, he was probably thinking about the title and being like, what's the fucking point of pushing for 25 points when I've got 20 on the cards and I can only gain five more when I'll already have X amount at Mazzano where I can win the title? Would you want to dice with Mark Marquez at Cota when the title's on the line? Because no. I fucking wouldn't. No way. <laughs> 
you know, so you know now he's done the smart thing and he can now win the title at Mizano. So yeah, like it, it's match point now, and that's is he gonna crack or no? Because this is a different Fabio this year. Yeah, he's a new breed of Fabio now. He's Fabio two point oh. <laughs> Fabi 2.0 question is will he use number one play next year <laughs> no you, you don't know do you it's just not a done thing anymore because oh, you've got your brands it doesn't add in, it doesn't add in. like you, you've got your own brands at the end of the day yeah like, but you know, imagine saying VR1 sounds weird yeah <laughs> <laughs> but then and I'd like to see the, the donut on the podium as well he yeah, stuck um, his uh, promise of Jet Lawrence. But Jet Lawrence, I haven't seen his doing his dancing yet. Yeah, um, I, I, I waited in for that. Mm, maybe um, there's a video somewhere. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, Red Bull will make him do it. 100%, because it's nice PR and click, you know. It's oh, nice mm. to see as well. Jet Lawrence got his brother Law, Hunter uh, Red Bull sponsorship as well, which is nice to see. Uh, Hunter was supposedly supposed to have it this year, but didn't, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was a, one of them things. Um, mm. But I think the problem we've got now is how many more stupid bets are we going to have on the podium? <laughs> I don't know, but I love it. It's funny to see it. It adds a little dynamic to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. If, you, if you don't win, you've got to eat a jelly deal or something. Yeah, you got to fucking... I don't know. Did, did you see Fabio's boots and gloves? For Chase Sexton, yes. they were fire. Upper stars boots killed and it. And boots and gloves and boots and gloves. And boots and gloves. <laughs> I'm annoyed though because bloody Ralph and has got custom special gloves and boots this weekend, but Cameron Bobier didn't, even though he's previously had them in his career. Yeah, last year he had them. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Maybe he didn't want them. Mate, doubt it. Well, you never know. Maybe he just sort of wanted to fly under the radar and then American Racing fucked everything anyway by a special livery. Yeah, maybe. Like it oh, look nice. Nobody's looking at me. I'm going to do well. Oh, shit in hell. Look at that. Mm, yeah, it's just a bit mad, to be fair. But um, back to the actual race. To, um, yeah, it's boring as shit. It was pretty boring. Do you think there was... Like, okay. I was like, this is the problem now, is... Uh, we we've almost forgotten what Mark Marquez does to a field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. After like such a thrill in twenty twenty, Marquez is winning, and we're like, oh yeah, this is what it's like. Yeah, you almost forget, and it's not Mark's fault. No, you know, if if he's the best, that's that's his problem, not anybody else's. Like you know, you you've got to deal with it. Exactly, that's just the name of the game. Do you think there was some um, some team orders going on there, Ducati? I do with Miller, but I don't with Martin. You can mm. see he was fading. Yeah, like, he got screwed he was... over by the uh, penalty there, yeah. though. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I would. I don't think he. You know, he lost. What was it? Nearly two seconds to Peko. Mm. Like he clearly slowed down. Yeah. And you, you can't predict it on track. Like it's, it's, it's harsh. Yeah, it is very super, hard. super harsh. Um, yeah. but the fact of the matter is, like, it's harsh. But I will say, in favour, it's consistent. Yeah, it's been it like it all year. So you can't have any real complaints. No, you can't at the end of the day. So I, I just... what could it, It's rare MotoGP is the most boring race lately. But today it was. If MotoGP is very much the most boring race at the moment. Well, the, the, only, bikes is just the, only, it. Yeah. the only spiciness was Mia and Miller again. Yeah, that's it. And um, like Mia been made to drop a place fair enough you know he mm. was over the line nice punterino yeah so like it was harsh and um miller freaking out at him and he is just like eh, whatever it's the <laughs> third know? time now though isn't it third time they he's... do not like each other no it's funny it's funny i love it, it yeah i i hope they don't take it too far and hurt with one another well me was grabbing his uh, helmet wasn't he yeah Which um is... It's uh, like I just hope they they no, keep Miller it on was grabbing track. The helmet, sorry. Yeah, I think that was more to pull the face down so he could look in his eyes and be like, "Fuck you." Yeah, what was it? I'll see you afterwards or something. I'll see you outside or something. He said, "Did he?" I didn't. I didn't yeah. hear. Yeah, no, you could see his. I, I'm sure he mouthed something along those lines, like lip reading. I'm sure he went, "I'll see you outside" or "I'll see you afterwards" or something. So I think um, he must have got to the Suzuki garage and kicked fuck out of here. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope not. Miz, I don't see Mir as being a fighter anyway, but... I don't know. The way he rides the bike with the aggression, I think there's there's a bit of a fire in him. Mm. Like, like, I could see him, you know... I don't think he'd start a fight, but I think he could finish a fight. Yeah, 100%. But, of course, Miller's like a, just your typical Aussie, and he, like, he'd, he'd probably get punched for fun, like... Yeah, Miller's... Miller's Miller, he's a bit of a nutcase. This <laughs> is what yeah, he like, wants to be, so... Probably just tells his mates to hit him so he can, like, be like, ha, fuck you. I like, punch him in the stomach, like they do for those yeah. ab workouts. They pound yeah. them in the stomach. That sounds really wrong. Yeah, so... So, yeah, fair, fair punishment for his... Mm. Drop Miller to get back. Um, I thought Miller had made a master stroke, to be honest, on the grid. He has to drive, and he's just fucked it. He yeah. just dropped back, didn't he? But i have been interested to to hear the comments about what went wrong because it the the whole point of going mediums and hards was that you had pace at the end of the race, and it clearly worked because Rossi got the fastest lap on medium rear on the final lap. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So. Cl- Clearly something went a bit tits up. I just don't know why, unless they just didn't come in quick enough. No, it was um, good for an air bastionini, wasn't it? When yeah. Mayer and Miller and White and Air picked up the two more places. real deal. Yeah, he's, he's actual real good. deal. He's really good. Like, no offence to Luca Marini, but as we said before, give Bastianini the 22 and give Luca the 21. Yeah, Marini faded to 14th, but did qualify 9th, which is good. Yeah, like, Luca's come in, don't get me mm. wrong, but Aenea deserves the 22 more, simple as. Well, he's proven it. The record proves it, and Rins did yeah. okay before dropping back as well. I don't know what's going on with him at the moment, to be honest, this whole year. Mm. It's, a, it's a weird one. On Let's Dobby. For Taka. Yeah, oh, and Alicia. Alicia, five crashes this weekend. Alicia as well, great. Yeah, uh, this is the first weekend where I, the Aprilia genuinely hasn't worked. Mm. And it looked... And, um, difficult yeah like i i completely understand why he didn't race mm. but it would have been interested to see how vinales dealt with it absolutely see if he did anything different yeah because vinales because is this, yeah well, he is a, he's a quality rider yeah and exactly. see if he could have done anything but it just looked like the aprilia just could not deal with the bumps mm. yeah um, which is you know it again it's a it's still a really new concept at the end of the day yeah these like, you know, it's you can't expect it to be strong absolutely everywhere. No, exactly. No, no bike is. Every bike does struggle. The Yamaha struggled a lot this weekend, and Fabio is Fabio's been Fabio. You know, he's absolutely outstanding that rider. And the second fastest Yamaha was Davizioso in thirteenth on the twenty nineteen bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Frankie will be back quicker. Yeah, he will. So 100%. that won't continue. No. Um, but obviously he's jumping on a completely different machine that requires a different riding style than nineteen. And he's injured before anyone pips in and goes, yeah. So did Dovi. Yep. Um well no Dovi hasn't ridden the twenty one, has he? Well That's Dovi's Dovi hasn't ridden any Yamaha since twenty eleven. Yeah. I mean like Dovi has switched him from a completely different machine. Is what I mean. Yeah. Um like I I'd say near enough the same switch. Yeah. Because the twenty one is such a different bike to the nineteen. Yeah. That, that you know, he, he, like he'll 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 be back. Is you know, Morbidelli is a class act. Yeah, it's Morbidelli um, in the day. So. But yeah, but yeah, back to it. Like Dovi, fair play to him. You know, beast mode thirteen. Yeah, like starting to figure it out. Um, I was very surprised to hear that. Um, he's finding the Yamaha quite big. Hmm. Which, it's you great. know, on paper the, the Ducati, Ducati looks huge. massive. Yeah, <laughs> but clearly it's not. It yeah. must just be scaled. Hmm. Yeah, like it'd be it'd be quite interesting to park one next to a like right next to each other to see the differences. Yeah, it would never ever happen, but you know. Hmm. Yeah, it's... yeah. So it's like the Ducati just looks huge, I think, because of all this aero. Yeah, it's, but the it's, reality it's is a longer Yamaha's bike. A bike. The Ducati is quite long as well. Yeah, so it's just like a low rider almost, and it's yeah. low and slow, like like a Tron bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you could see it cruising down the boulevard, couldn't you? Yeah, 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 like a chopper. Yeah. Yeah, he did well, and Rossi got a point as well, so well done, Valentino. Yeah, um, fastest lap as well, like, mm. <laughs> on the final lap. Like, yeah. I, I, said it, I said it was pointless brilliance. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame you don't get a point of fastest lap in the Mercury P. <laughs> was... Yeah, like, it was... It was just an act of brilliance that ultimately was completely fucking pointless. Yeah. It was like, why not? And I, I like the um, Kevin Schwantz helmet that he did for Valentino as well. That was quite nice. 
yeah, with the 46 integrated in it. Because yeah. obviously Schwantz is Rossi's hero, isn't he? Yeah, and then um, made at the 36 with the 36 on his lid. And, yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, oh, why is he done it in that font now? Kevin Schwantz was 34. Oh, yeah, the amount of comments on my post <laughs> was like, Kevin Schwantz is 34, but yeah, me is 36, mate. And 34 yeah. retired in the Premier class. Yeah. But, um,. And Rins uses 69 on the back, which is nice. And I like the uh, the crowd cheers for that. That was quite nice to see. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. That was... Um, Gave me goosebumps, that did. Yeah, Nicky's obviously been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he has, yeah. This weekend. So it was a nice little tribute. Yeah, and then... I didn't like the front of Rins' though, with the American football look. That, that just, <laughs> yeah, that, like, sorry, but pointless. Great. Yeah, but... Um... And then Marquez using the 69 on his cool down that, but that was nice as well. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah, teammates, that's gonna obviously, be... at one point, so... That's going to be one of those iconic photos, that, isn't it? 100%. Yeah, it so, will be. Like, you know, there's already one of them carrying the flag in, I think, 18 or 19. Yeah. So that's going to be another iconic one. It's going to be really nice to see. Yeah, especially on American soil to do it as well. So. Yeah, like, Marquez is basically a... An adopted American at this point, did he? That's the place, like, <laughs> yeah, it's sad though. Like, it doesn't make me sad, you know, when you see like people doing the flags because Nicky would have been the mate, he loved it there, you know, and like to be part of the mm. American Race Academy and all that. It's such, yes. such a tragic loss, like, because he could have so incredible, like, he could have in- in- influenced the you know, the American racing yeah. side of things Honda, incredibly well. Honda would have given him anything that he'd wanted, yeah. They loved him, you know. It's... He won the title after all, you know. Like, oh, he... imagine that team of Hopper and Nicky Hayden King in American talent. That'd be sick, you know. Like, even like the, you know, the Nicky Hayden Academy or something like that, like that you know. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. So I'm glad we haven't forgotten about Nicky. Nah, we'll never forget him. Mate. He's a legend. Hundred percent. I'm glad we. I'm glad we. You know, it's easy to say, but it's harder to do. I'm glad we did. Yeah, and you know, we do miss him. So yeah. So um, let's finish the podcast on that note that Nicky Hayden's a legend and um, yeah. we'll be back next weekend. There's no race in this next weekend, so we'll have to try and think of something to talk about, um, but I'm sure we'll manage. One thing, what was our MotoGP predictions? Oh, yeah. Didn't do the Moto2 ones either, to be fair. I'm going to, what was the Moto2 as well? We'll finish on that. that. Oh, someone's having a go at me on Instagram, so that's fun. Um, someone said I'm sure, unprofessional. Sure. Someone said I'm unprofessional for my meme on Guevara. Um, <laughs> so your Moto two predictions were. Oh, Ag- don't look at my page. Then fucking hell. <laughs> your um, predictions were Augusto Fernandez, Joe Roberts, and Remy Gardner. Mine were Ralph Fernandez, Remy, and Lowe's. The Moto GP, you went Peco, Martin, and Mark Marquez. And I went Mark Marquez, Elation, and Peco. So I got two or three. You got two or three as well. Oh no, you got you got three or three. You went Peco, Martin, Mark. Oh no, wait, Fabio. <laughs> Fabio, yeah. Fabio. I was so close, bloody hell. Yeah, you were... Uh, Martin like... was out there. Yeah, he was four, funny. Yeah, like, Martin was a wild prediction last week, but it paid off. Yeah. So, right, I'm going to end the podcast there, anyway. Um, hope you've all yeah. enjoyed listening, and we're back next week. Yeah, um, let's have a good one, guys. It's been nice to come back to, to the American races. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Later, Taylor.